Insurance is confusing. In today's video, we're going to break down the different types of insurance and hopefully make things a little bit clearer. Stay tuned. Hi there and welcome to our channel. My name is Sarah and I'm here today with iHealth Brokers to break down the different types of insurance. Now if this is your first time to our channel, welcome. Please make sure to take a look around because we've got plenty of videos about health insurance and how to save money on health insurance as well as health care updates. And of course make sure to subscribe because we do release these videos on a weekly basis. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok so make sure to check us out. And as always, please make sure to like this video so we can get this information out there. We want to help others, we want to help our clients and our viewers understand their health insurance and save money. Now today we're going to be talking about the different types of health insurance, from group health plans to Medicare and everywhere in between. So let's start with group health plans. Group health insurance is health insurance that is offered by your employer as part of their benefits package. It may include health, vision, and dental. Basically, your employer will contribute to a portion of your premium and you'll be responsible for the remainder. Your employer, generally speaking, gets some type of discount because they are purchasing these plans in bulk. Now, when you leave your employer, if you leave your employer either because you retire early or you quit, then you may be eligible for COBRA. You'll notice that COBRA is much more expensive than what you were paying before because now you're responsible for your portion plus your employer's portion. You'll be able to enroll when you first start work, generally speaking after some type of probationary period. During this time, you may have the option to choose between different types of health insurance, perhaps something like an HMO or a PPO. An HMO is a health maintenance organization. A PPO is a preferred provider's organization. Do you need to know this? No, probably not, but we're telling you anyway. So an HMO will have lower monthly premiums, but you'll be restricted to use in-network doctors and hospitals, of course, unless it's an emergency. A PPO will give you access to doctors and hospitals that are in-network and out-of-network, but you'll have to pay a little bit more if you use an out-of-network doctor or hospital. Additionally, with an HMO, you have to have a primary care physician, which is a PCP, and they will have to make referrals for you to see specialists. With a PPO, you don't have to have a primary care physician, and if you want to see a specialist, well, just go. But PPOs, generally speaking, do have slightly higher monthly premiums. So a PPO will give you more flexibility, possibly a little bit more expensive out of pocket on a monthly basis. An HMO will have less flexibility, usually a lower monthly premium. With group health insurance, you'll be able to change your plan or update your benefits every year during open enrollment. Or if you undergo certain qualifying life events, you'll have a special enrollment period in which you can change your benefits or update your beneficiaries. For example, if you get married and you want to add your spouse to your plan, or if you have or adopt a baby and you want to add your baby to your plan, you would enter into a special enrollment period. And during this time, you add the beneficiary and you can change plans entirely if you so choose. Now let's talk about marketplace plans. So marketplace plans are the health insurance plans that are offered by healthcare.gov or perhaps on your state's individual website if they do have an individual marketplace. Generally speaking, you can find HMOs, PPOs are pretty hard to find, but you can find EPOs, which are exclusive provider organizations. Now, do you need to know what that means? No, but we're telling you anyway. So an EPO is somewhere in between an HMO and a PPO. You may or may not need a primary care physician, but you probably won't need a referral to see a specialist, which is definitely nice, it saves you a trip, and you still have to work in network unless, of course, it is a medical emergency. Now, like I said, marketplace plans are offered by healthcare.gov, that's healthcare.gov. You log on to the website every year during open enrollment or a special enrollment period if you qualify, and you can choose from a series of different plans. Now, with marketplace plans, you may be eligible for a premium tax credit. If your income and household size falls within certain thresholds, then you may be eligible for a premium tax credit, which will significantly lower your monthly premiums. So we strongly encourage you to take a look at your MAGI, which is your Modified Adjusted Gross Income, which is what 
healthcare.gov will be asking you for and see if you can find a way to make yourself eligible for those premium tax credits. If you're unsure, you may want to work with an accountant or speak with a broker because a broker is a third party liaison who works for you, not the insurance company. They're experts in their field and they can help guide you towards the right plan that will help you save money. If you'd like our help, you can reach us at iHealthBrokers at 888. 4100344. We are licensed nationwide and there is absolutely no charge for our services. Additionally, marketplace plans have those metal tiers that you may have heard about, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. A platinum plan doesn't mean that it's better coverage than a bronze level plan. It just has to do with the cost share. A bronze level plan, your insurance will cover 60%. You'll be responsible for 40. A silver, it's 70-30. Gold, 80-20. And with a platinum plan, your insurance carrier will cover 90% and you're responsible for 10%. So again, it's not about the benefits. It's not about the coverage. It's just about how the cost share breaks down. On the flip side, generally speaking, bronze plans will have lower monthly premiums and platinum plans will have higher monthly premiums. Now let's talk about private health insurance. Private health insurance is not offered on healthcare.gov. There are no premium tax credits that you can qualify for, but it's much more likely that you'll be able to find a PPO if you need nationwide PPO coverage. Now, private health insurance is going to be more expensive but like I said, way, way more flexibility. And if you don't qualify for a premium tax credit, it may not be that much more expensive. So it's something that you're going to want to look into when comparing healthcare.gov without a premium tax credit versus private health insurance. Now for private health insurance, you either need to work with an agent, which is a representative of the carrier, or a broker. We recommend a broker because a broker works for you. An agent works for the carrier, which is the insurance company. So if you work with an agent, you have to call multiple different agents because they can only talk to you about their company. One type of private health insurance is short-term medical insurance. Now, short-term medical insurance is not available in every state. That's something very important to remember. Short-term medical insurance is great if you meet certain criteria. Generally speaking, short-term medical insurance plans won't have the same extensive coverage as a group health insurance plan or healthcare.gov plan, but they're very much so tailored to meet your needs. So if you want, you can sort of pick and choose and add on which benefits you need because, well, the opportunities are rather endless. A short-term medical insurance plan will have a much, much lower monthly premium but it won't cover everything. If you have a pre-existing condition, it won't cover that, certainly not in the first year, although if you get a multi-year short-term medical plan, then it may cover it after the first year. It also won't cover pregnancy. And if you have young children, small children, then a short-term medical insurance plan is probably not, not for you. However, while I'm mentioning it, if you do have a pre-existing condition, you cannot be denied for a healthcare.gov plan. When you turn 65, you'll most likely become eligible for Medicare, and you'll most likely be automatically enrolled in original Medicare. That's part A and part B, which will cover most of your medical expenses. Part A is your hospital insurance, part B is your outpatient insurance, and like I said, they will cover most of your medical expenses. However, if you'd like, you can supplement that coverage with a Medicare supplement plan. You can also look into Part D, which is your prescription drug coverage, or you can forego original Medicare entirely with a Medicare Advantage plan. The options are almost endless. So when it's time to enroll in Medicare, make sure you do your research at least six months in advance. That way you can find the right plan for your needs. If you want to learn more about Medicare, boy, have we got a ton of videos about Medicare. So make sure to check out our channel. The last thing that I want to talk about is not actually health insurance. And really it's two things. We're talking about healthcare ministries and direct primary care. So healthcare ministries, again, are not health insurance. It's when a group of like-minded individuals decide to pool their money together to pay for medical expenses as they arise. However, because it's not health insurance, there's no pre-negotiated rate or copay. You have to negotiate that yourself and then pay out of pocket and be reimbursed. And there's actually no guarantee of reimbursement. We've heard horror stories about healthcare ministries. They are not health insurance, so it's definitely not something we can recommend. However, for some people, they work great. So as always, do your research. If you want to learn more, we've got a video all about it. Another option is direct primary care. 
Again, this is not health insurance. This is something that some doctors are offering. You can pay a small monthly fee. It's going to be much less expensive than your average health insurance plan. And for that monthly fee, you can have basically unlimited access to your primary care doctor, to that one specific doctor. However, there's no coverage if you need to see a specialist or if you need to have a procedure in a hospital. So a lot of people supplement that direct primary coverage with some type of high deductible health plan or short-term medical insurance, something to cover them should there be large medical expenses. So in the end, they still end up needing some type of health insurance. Again, we've got a video all about that. If you like today's video, please make sure to click like, click the thumbs up because we want to get this information out there. And of course, make sure to subscribe, that way you stay up to date because we do release these videos on a weekly basis. And if you have any questions whatsoever, you can reach us in the comments or you can give us a call at 888-410-0344. We are licensed nationwide and there is no charge for our services. As always, you can find us here on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. And if there are any videos you'd like to see, let us know. Thank you so much for watching.